Okay, today I have the pleasure to present you the network, um, which, is, uh, uh, which brings dynamic network and cytoscape tree. Um, as Alexander said, I developed it this summer during the, uh, during the Google Summer of Code, and uh, I'm very thankful for, uh, for Alexander to inviting me here and to Google to supporting the, the travel expenses. So the, this project has been developed with the, under the supervision of um, Jason, and uh, thanks a lot for the very nice um, uh, support, and uh, John uh, Brown. So anything that I'm gonna uh, present, uh, so the application is, uh, is uh, uh, available on the store, and um, anything that I'm gonna present, uh, you can find more information on this, um, on this webpage where um, the uh, latest version of the application is, and also all the manual and examples and everything. Um, I will release uh, uh, an update of the application as, uh, as soon as uh, uh, Cytoscape 3 is uh, released officially. <laughs> So let's get me started. Um, first of all, what is a, a dynamic network? A dynamic network is any network that has nodes, edges, um, or any attribute that changes, and, you and usually changes in time, but you can think of it of also any parameter. Um, for instance, it could be any um, experimental conditions. So it doesn't necessarily have to be time. Um, and what has been the goal of the project? If you, have a, if you have a dynamic graph changing, it's very cool and you can make very impressive presentations. Um, but this is a very small part of, uh, of, uh, of having dynamical data because the biggest part is to visualize the data and be able to analyze and understand it so then they can you effectively show uh, the data and people can understand what is behind it. So this has been the goal uh, of this application is to build a tool inside Cytoscape in order to uh, allow you to load dynamic data and online visualize it and analyze it to, for, for you to be able to understand what are the interesting points in the network or is there any, any artifacts in your network. And so um, DynetWorks comes, um, I'll give you a, a brief o uh, overview of, um, from a user point of view. It comes from different features uh, the first one, you are able to uh, load dynamic network, and dynamic network, um, uh, you can specify them with a uh, XGML uh, file. Um, you can visualize them uh, in, in, the, in the network view, um, and the dynamic networks come with a panel in which you can control the time, and so you can uh, uh, scroll across different uh, slides in time. Um, you're also able to apply visual mappings that will change in time, so you can color depending on, on the attributes that you have on the network. And I think the most important thing of all, you are able to attach to your network a dynamic layout. And this is very helpful to, um, to understand your data. And I'm, I have implemented two examples, uh, what I call incremental, Kamada, Kaway, and uh, uh, Perfuse layout algorithm. And then last, uh, um, what is the goal, the, the goals nowadays is actually uh, to be able to put a video in YouTube. Um, so I would like to, um, I will show a demo because I think it's uh, uh, visualize uh, how the application works is the best things. But before uh, showing you the demo, I want to um, explain a, a detail that I think it's very important and it's going backward what is inside our dynamic network represented in, in in this application and, and why it is important to understand uh, dynamic networks. So if you think of uh, networks from a static point of view and then you think of dynami dynamics, what you usually do is actually think about um, figure A, you have time and um, um, representing snapshots of a static network that changes in time. And this is uh, um, kind of natural to think of. Uh, but it has two very big flows. So the first one is from an implementation point of view. If you want to store your dynamic network with uh, slices in time, you need to store every slice in, in your application. And this is very expensive uh, in terms of implementation. And, um, and secondly, it's also not uh, um, cap really capturing the dynamics. And I can show you this with a very simple example. So look at the, at the network. Um, you can see that in the first uh, time slice, you have node C communicating something to node D. In the second, 
uh, snapshot, you have B communicated something with uh, to network uh, to to node B. So what it never come out from this view in, in slices is that actually node C in times com could communicate something to node B through uh, going through node uh, D. Um, and to and to better view this, you have to imagine that um, you roll out the network in time. Um, so what you do is to each node, edge, or attribute, you apply a list of interval times. And an interval times tells you when this particular element is existing in time. And so we have the nodes here, that they, for instance, node A that exists all over time, but the link between node A and B exists only on this particular slice in time. Um, and this view has two, two advantages. Um, the first one is makes the implementation much, much more efficient. Because now, what you do, you care only about the points of the network that changes. Um, and so you can actually simplify your network, and, um, and you don't need to care about uh, all the network data when you're visualizing it. You just look at the part of the network that changes. Um, for instance, um, if a link is added or removed. Um, and secondly, um, this particular implementation allows you to grasp much better the dynamics. Now you can see that the pathway between C and B is very clearly visible here. And it's also much better to address in, a, in an implementation point of view. Um, so, but what I mean with this pathway in time, I, can, I, I think it's, I can better visualize with the, with the uh, demonstration. So let me go over. So this is Satascape. Um, we want to upload some um, dynamic data. Um, okay, maybe maybe I forgot. Um, maybe I show you first what type of data I'm, I'm gonna show you. Uh, yeah. So um, I'm, I'm gonna give you an example of um, of, uh, of uh, data from from one of my colleagues that wanted to be able to represent some dynamic data. And what he's looking at is neural networks. Neural networks are based on uh, neurons that are um, that grow dendrites, and, uh, and when these dendrites and axons meet, they can form, or different dendrites meet, they can form uh, synapses. And, uh, and so the, the neurons are able to communicate uh, electrically from one to the other uh, through the synapses. And these networks are dynamics because the weights of the synapses change and so uh, the network can be, um, uh, neurons can be enhanced or inactivated based on the, uh, uh, based on the weights of the synapses. So they can pass more or less messages. And so what he's doing is um, simulating this kind of networks and he wants to see the dynamic in the network and, and see if it makes sense with, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with these um, uh, experiments. So. So now I'm um, loading one of these. Oh, it appears here. Uh, I'm sorry, the menu appears in this side here. Uh, I try, no, it breaks the system. <laughs> so actually I'm, I'm going to import and uh, I have a, uh, a option in which I can choose dynamic network and, um, and here it bumps this up and um, I think it's this one. So data is now loaded <coughs> and I can display it, it's a mess at this point and the uh, um, dynamic network panel is, is, uh, is lighting up. Um, so now we are we are uh, we are looking at the network. Um, let me um, just uh, put a, a visual style that I encoded previously. So that makes a little bit more understandable. So um, this network is um, is between time zero and time one hundred and seventy uh, seventy seven, um, and here I can. I can pan through the network and see that actually there is something changing. So what you are seeing is that the nodes are the, 
the different neurons, and the edges are the uh, connection between them, and uh, the, co the, the, the color and the thickness of the line represent the weight. So the stronger two neurons are connecting, the stronger will be the weight. And you can see that something is changing, but it's not very understandable um, what is actually happening. So what we are going to do now is we are going to attach a dynamic layout to this, uh, um, uh, to this uh, network. So I go to lay uh, layout. Um, I can choose, I show you the schematic away layout. So here, this, um, so here you can choose, um, um, I'm sorry. Um, on which uh, on which edge attributes to compute the the layout? I I will tell um, wait. Very strange. Um, then here is a parameter that tells me uh, how, how fast the nectar will will uh, relax. It's a, it's a parameter in the Kamada Kawai algorithm. And uh, one one very important thing is this, is these two parameters here. Um, so I told you that we can understand network as as uh, slices in time. Um, and it means that uh, we, we could find clusters of, of nodes that are very highly uh, connected in, in slices, but we also want to look at cluster that goes through time. So what I'm doing is actually I'm run, I can run a smoothing kernel through time, um, which allows me to pull out better this, uh, this cluster that are occurring in time. And since I control with these two parameters, I can condition the, 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 the layout, uh, the, the current layout, to the past and to the uh, uh, and, and also to the future. Um, so to the past, it means that the network will have kind of a fading memory, and to the future, it doesn't really have a meaningful uh, um, explanation. But sometimes it's useful just to for the visualization. So here, let me uh, do like this. I say okay. Now what is doing is um, pre-computing. So. Um, now it's pre-computing uh, the nodes' positions, uh, and when the uh, computation is finished, I can I can play out. So at the beginning, nothing will happen, uh, very little, and at some point the network starts to um, to change. So now so it was a little bit too fast, and here I have options to um, select um, um, how actually the, the, the time steps I want to go through. Oh, I'm really sorry. Um, let's make. And uh, and how smooth should be the transitions? Maybe like this. Um, and now let me go quickly where it something happened. I think it was here. Yeah. So you can see now that uh, it's very clear now that you see how the different nodes start to cluster because the different neurons start to communicate with each other. And um, um, and what is nice is that you can you can um, um, using using this, you can always jump back and forward, and uh, and also change the layout um, so that you can better analyze um, uh, your data. Um, okay. Um. <coughs> so that's that's where the application is now. Um, I want to show. So the application is here. It's actually all the core classes for, for being able to handling dynamic data and, uh, and examples of, of computing um, uh, layout. It's, it's all it there. And I think in now the really fun part of the project will start. Because now you can think of many things. You, um, you may want to, um, we, we may want to um, uh, use this, uh, this, uh, this plugin to extend to have dynamic charts, for example, or have uh, uh, custom layouts. Um, you could also think that actually you want to have uh, online data coming from internet and you want to be able to visualize it uh, uh, online in, in Tablescape. Um, and um, you also, so this is a, is a visualization approach, um, but you could also think that one could use the, the, the same classes to, to do, um, uh, to design dynamic clustering algorithm that uh, allows you to quantify how much uh, nodes clustered and so on. And, um, and one other thing that would be also interesting is to be able to, s um, so there are some currently some limitation, um, in part because of the cytoscape architecture and uh, in part because um, I would still need to implement uh, more um, uh, sophisticated layout algorithms, um, like uh, uh, um, 
multi multi level uh, uh, multi scale algorithms to to be to be faster. So it would be interesting to also uh, look at the scale up uh, of uh, of this uh, of this case. So I'm very thankful for for the invitation, and I hope you you can uh, use the application. Thank you very much. Yes, for example, one, one of the points is that uh, many different uh, data sets come with different interest points. So it's, it's probably going to be tailored to, to specific uh, data sets. This, this, at this level, it tries to be general so that you can visualize and see what the interesting part is. would be very interesting then to, so to go to in this direction. Because function, exactly, you exactly. If you, look, if you look at the community, uh, it's Clustering in, in static network is very well defined, but clustering in dynamic networks is, uh, there is no standard tool. Every, it depends what you're interested in. Yeah, so but that will be very interesting. And so I hope uh, uh, maybe to find uh, people in the next uh, Google summer, of course, if any students are interested, it will be very nice. So with this dynamic layout, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I understand that the weight attributes are changing all the time. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, so is the, is the layout algorithm being brought to equilibrium at each time step, or is, that, is there an overlap here of the okay, phenomena? So, yeah, there is an overlap. So because you can uh, you can decide how, how fast the network relax. Okay. So if you have a very fast relaxation, there will be an event that changes the, the, the network, mm -hmm. and the network will relax very fast and go to the equilibrium. But if you have uh, um, um, a relaxation that is very slow, it will mean that more many events to the App Store, uh, as part of that um, project, we also uh, hosted our first um, Sciencecape 3 app com competition. This is the first of many we'll do. Um, the goal of this was to try to encourage, try to encourage app submissions in time for the 3 or release so that we'd have uh, some content there, and it, and, and it worked pretty well. Um, so the idea here was to submit apps before the, the 10th of December. This is it completed, this first competition. And we wanted to make sure the app at least started. That was the minimum requirement. Uh, you got bonus points if it had unique features that Sciscape didn't have before, intuitive user interfaces, good user documentation, which we always take very seriously, um, et cetera. And um, I'm pleased to announce we have a tie for first place. Uh, Sabina, uh, your Dyn Network was, uh, was one of the, the ties. And the other one, uh, sorry, I have them both here. Uh, these were all the submissions. Um, we, got, uh, we have a total of 12 apps ready for 3.0, and I think six or seven of them came in through this competition. Um, Klugo um, is the other winner. I don't know if the makers of Klugo are here. Um, it's a group. Um, out of 
Um, I think that's in France somewhere. Um, are they here? No, so we'll have to let them know remotely. So uh, a round of applause for our first two <laughs> winners of the first app store. And again, if you're interested in app development, keep an eye out for uh, future competitions. Uh, they'll be either targeting specific domains or uh, different activities or porting. Uh, we might even have some for the user community around um, identifying data sets that are great for network analysis or for providing reviews and ratings of apps. So keep an eye out for more of those. And if you have ideas for competitions, we're definitely open. This is a new uh, supplement we got to our NRB grant that's for community engagement. So whatever we can do to help uh, keep you guys involved.